Welcome everybody to something new that I am doing on my channel, which is a short and sweet guide to the basics of Guardian Druid tanking. This guide is uh, meant for people who are new to bear tanking or new to tanking in general and wanted some information about bears. It'll be covering their rotation, talent choices, uh, basic stats, food and flasks, and a little bit covering their artifact progression path, although in the video I will explain why. I don't think that that is a particularly set path. So hopefully you find this guide useful, please do let me know, and without any kind of further delays, let's dive in. The first thing I'd like to cover are your bear skills, which are split into two categories, on global cooldown and off global cooldown. You start with growl, rage of the sleeper, then mangle, then swipe, then thrash, then you have maul, and lastly, Moonfire and then Pulverize for on global cooldown. Off global cooldown are your defensives, Bark Skin, Survival Instincts, Frenzied Regen, Markversal, Iron Fur, and that's kind of it. These are your basic kit as a bear and do all of your damage and all of your mitigation. Uh, there is a little bit more that can go into that, but we'll cover that a little later on. Starting with the basics as a tank, you'll always want to be standing in front of the boss if you are actively tanking and trying to keep any bosses or adds facing away from your party. This is just a basic rule, some exceptions may have to be made depending on boss mechanics, but that's basically how you want to do it. Because your skills are split into two categories as a bear, on GCD and off GCD, it's exceedingly easy for you to maintain your active mitigation, Mark of Ursol or Iron Fur, almost 100% of the time. So your rotation becomes more of a priority rotation than a typical DPS rotation where you click this, and then you click this, and then you click this. You want to be hitting things as they come off the cooldown. So you'll want to maintain Iron Fur or Mark of Ursol at all times. Then apply Thrash uh, and get Pulverized Ticking at two stacks of Thrash, it consumes them. You want to spend any Moonfire procs as soon as they happen if you've taken the Galactic Guardian talent, and then spending any Mangle procs from Gore as much as possible. You also then want to use Mangle if it is off cooldown, uh, as soon as it is off cooldown. Then use your Thrash in between, uh, stacking Pulverize to make sure that you've got those dots ticking, and using Swipe as a filler. You almost always never want to use Maul unless you're Cat Weaving, which we'll cover a little bit later on in the video. Guardian Druids have a number of talents that can be chosen based on your playstyle and the situation. Because of this, I'm just going to run through the talents that I have chosen and talk about what I feel works best for me. The first tier includes Brambles, a small Thorns type ability for those of you familiar with Diablo, Bristling Fur, a talent that requires you to anticipate large hits of damage and then pop it shortly beforehand, and Blood Frenzy, my personal choice, which generates rage based on ticks of thrash. Because Thrash can stack up to 3 times normally, you're generating 6 rage per damage tick. This is the most reliable source of rage generation on this tier, and for this reason, is my personal favourite. The second tier is utility based, offering guttural roars, intimidating roar, and wild charge. Because guttural roars reduces the cooldown of stampeding roar by half, I feel it is the most useful talent on this tier, it also increases the range of it, allowing it to hit almost always all of your raid. The second talent, Intimidating Roar, replaces Incapacitating Roar with a Fear. I don't see this being useful in any other situation except for maybe Mythic Plus, and even then you would have to be exceedingly careful when you use it as Fear usually causes enemies to flee into other enemies and pull the whole dungeon. Lastly you have Wild Charge. This talent is also fairly popular amongst a lot of bear players, it was part of their kit back when they were feral tanks, uh, and just in it changes based on your uh, form, which is Useful for some, not so much for me, and so I still prefer Guttural Roars. The third talent tier is your Affinity Talents. Out of these choices, I feel that Feral or Restoration Affinity are your best choices. You will hardly ever need your Balance Affinity. As a new tank, or an unfamiliar with bear tanking tank, you'll want to take your Sarah's Gift. It provides a large boost in self-healing and also a small or large, depending on your general healing ability, uh, amount of heals for your raid. There is a thing for bears called cat weaving, which will increase your passes on things like Warcraft logs for DPS, uh, but this is something I'll cover in maybe a later video talking about more 
advanced bear tactics. So for my for me, for this video, my choice is Restoration Affinity. The next tier comes down to CC. You have Mighty Bash, Mass Entanglement, or Typhoon. I prefer Mighty Bash out of all of these tiers, with Typhoon coming in handy in very uh, cle or cinch situations. Mighty Bash being a stun is something that is absolutely invaluable to you as a tank. You can CC briefly, you can interrupt spell casts, you can stop the damage incoming to you, uh, and is exceedingly useful in dungeons like Mythic Pluses. It also helps a lot with raid trash too, so for this tier, Mighty Bash is my choice. 75 offers Soul of the Forest, Incarnation Guardian of Ursoc, and Galactic Guardian. Soul of the Forest increases the damage done by Mangle and the Rage Generation. Perhaps with the two piece of your tier, this might be a little bit more useful, but assuming you don't have that, I skip over this talent. Incarnation Guardian of Ursoc can be used in situations where you're going to need to be taunting a lot or spamming your abilities, but remember, it only lasts 30 seconds. It is not a complete use taunt all the time to pick up adds type deal. But if you are the ad tank, or you need to tank a lot of adds in a small period of time, Incarnation can be very useful. Lastly, Galactic Guardian. This is my choice, and the base choice for most bear druids at this point in time. Your damage triggers free Moonfire procs. This is pretty useful for AoE as well. AoE abilities cause it to proc on various enemies. Also, when this occurs, it gives you a proc of Moonfire that generates 8 rage and deals 300% increased direct damage. This is incredibly useful for your... Uh, for your single target DPS, and in my opinion makes it a fairly invaluable talent. It also allows you to generate more rage and procs fairly often, so thus Galactic Guardian is my choice for this tier. The next tier offers Earth Warden, Guardian of Alun, and Survival of the Fittest. Earth Warden is a small amount of auto attack damage reduction. In my opinion this isn't very useful considering Pretty much all of your mitigation from Iron Fur reduces the damage done by white or basic attacks. Uh, this makes Earth Warden less and less useful the more armor you end up having. Guardian of Alun increases the duration of Iron Fur or Mark of Ursol when you use Mangle, or the healing from your next Frenzied Regen. With the two piece tier, I find this to be extra, extra useful, but even without it, using these in the right order, going back to the priority I mentioned earlier, makes this talent fairly invaluable. Survival of the Fittest reduces the cooldown of Barkskin and Survival Instincts. Barkskin already has a tiny cooldown, and Survival Instincts has two charges. When used properly and in conjunction with Iron Fur, you would not need Survival of the Fittest. The level 100 tier offers Rend and Tear, Lunar Beam, and Pulverize. The two choices in this tier come down to Pulverize or Rend and Tear in my opinion. Lunar Beam is just not useful enough unless you find yourself standing still all the time, which is exceedingly rare, uh, and plus the cooldown is just, I mean it's a minute and 25 seconds and that's not that useful. So Pulverize was recently buffed, uh, it went from 8% to 9% damage reduction. You can keep this up almost 100% of the time if you're doing your rotation properly. On targets where there's only 1-3 to three targets, or where you're not actively tanking something else all the time, Pulverize is definitely the best choice for this tier. Otherwise, you'll want to go with Rend and Tear, which increases the amount of damage Thrash deals and reduces your damage taken by 2% by the target that is afflicted. With the Legendary that increases the amount of stacks you can apply of, Ren of Thrash, Rend and Tear becomes more and more useful, and may be considered over Pulverize if you do indeed have this Legendary. Like any other class, Guardian Druid stats are split into two categories, Primary and Secondary. Your Primary stats are Agility and Stamina, your Secondary stats are Crit Strike, Haste, Mastery, and Versatility. The agreed upon statistics priority for Guardian Druids is Armor, Versatility and Mastery, then Haste and Crit. Versatility and mastery can be used interchangeably depending on what you prefer as a player. I personally prefer versatility over mastery, but try and keep them as even as possible. The last thing I wanted to cover in this video is Guardian Artifact Progression. 
Your artifact weapon, Claws of Ursok, grant you the ability Rage of the Sleeper, which prevents 25% of the damage you take and reflects nature damage based on attack power back at your enemies. The first golden trait you're going to want is Embrace of the Nightmare, which significantly buffs Rage of the Sleeper. Then you're going to want to go for Adaptive Fur for more magical damage reduction. Lastly, go for Gory Fur. This is the path I've found works best for me, but with the new artifact knowledge boost, it shouldn't take you long at all to max out all your traits. Since that just about covers the basics, thanks for watching everybody, and stay tuned for part 2.